Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, co-host of the CUBE. We're here at Sundance Film Festival, the Intel Tech Lounge, for a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Kane Lee, who's the head of content at Baobab Studios in California. Thanks for uh, joining me here at the Intel Tech Lounge. Really excited to be here. Yeah, we just had a panel on the new creative here in Intel. It's showing some great technology, uh, things like volumetric, all kinds of really hardcore tech, mm -hmm. um, really powering some of the VR, AR, mixed reality, all the trends that are happening around user experience. But a new creative artist is out there, a new storyteller. It could be a 12-year-old to a 50-year-old. You're in the middle of it. You're an award-winning producer. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're building the stories. You're building the content. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest thing happening here at Sundance? Um, I, I think it's uh, really interesting because um, content has always been my passion, good, good storytelling. Um, and growing up, um, uh, it was always like books and films and all these uh, um, traditional mediums that um, um, inspired me to sort of dream. And um, right here in Sundance, we're in the middle of a great sea change going on because technology and art are coming together in um, uh, such a fast pace to really uh, usher in the new generation of storytelling. And uh, we're all very fortunate to be in the middle of that. This is a very unique period in our history um, as humans in our culture um, to challenge what storytelling really means because VR, um, uh, for us at Baobab, is the next great medium. And um, Sundance recognizes that. Um, um, uh, technology companies like Intel recognize that. Um, so we're all coming together uh, at the film festival and um, working together to uh, define what that will mean. Okay, you're an Emmy Award winning producer. Um, Baobab's doing some cutting edge work. Take a minute to talk about what Baobab is doing and why is it so relevant? We, we know it's cool. We've interviewed uh, the CEO and founder before. Um, share with the audience, what is Baobab doing? Why is it so relevant? Um, so we formed a couple of years ago and um, at the time VR was, and it still is in its very nascent stage, um, one thing that we recognized was an opportunity to try to create content that um, would appeal for, for people from the age of, ages of 5 to 105. Um, there was a lot of documentaries, there was a lot of experiential um, art house type of material, um, and there was a lot of uh, gaming type of uh, content for VR. Um, for us, um, we're, we're big lovers of animation and how that um, unites families, uh, kids, grandparents, uh, teenagers, and we saw an opportunity to try to create content that could appeal to, um, to all of these uh, different types of people through animation. So that's, that's sort of our mission, is to inspire your childlike sense of wonder um, using two mediums that are so meant for each other, which are animation and VR. I'd like to talk about some of the work you got going on a little bit later, but I want to talk about that 12-year-old uh, uh, in, in his room or the 16 year old that's got a full rig, tricked out with the keyboard, they're laying down music, they're building music, they're gaming, they might be creating art. They are a living, breathing, creative. And they're self-learning, they're jumping on YouTube, they're jumping into VR meetups and groups, they're self-learning. Absolutely. How do you connect to them? How, what do they do? What's the playbook? How do these people go to the next level? What's the industry doing around this? I mean, I think, uh, you know, one example I'll give is uh, I was at ANSI Film Festival, and uh, that's, you know, one of the biggest animation-focused film festivals in the world. And um, I, uh, you know, uh, I was showcasing our very first piece. It was called Invasion, um, uh, starring Ethan Hawke, uh, where you're in the, actually in the body of a bunny rabbit, um, and uh, you meet another bunny rabbit, you create a bond, and together you thwart an alien invasion on, on Earth. Um, what was so interesting to me was I had never seen um, that, that sort of that demo, that teenage demo, um, uh, where young boys and girls would actually bring their parents back to the experience and say, this is what I want to study uh, in college. This is what I want to do um, you know, in, in art school. So um, I think that they, um, you know, growing up with all this new technology, really sort of get um, the idea of being in real time um, and, and having storytelling in real time. Um, and, and seeing that level of interest from that age group, um, you know, was very sort of aff uh, affirming to us that 
we're on the right track uh, in terms of the next generation of storytelling. Well, you guys are definitely on the right track, I can say that. But I think what your point confirms and connects the dots for people that might not be in the industry is that it, the old tech world was the geeks did it, software was, a, was an art, and you had to be in that CS club. The democratization is a big trend here, and what you're talking about is people are humanizing. They can see real emotional, practical examples. So the young guns, the young kids, they don't have baggage. <laughs> they, they look at it with, they look at it with a you know, clean slate and going, I want that. I can see myself using this. I can self-actualize with this. So it really kind of tips the scales and proves the point. Absolutely. Um, we, uh, we, we world premiered Asteroids, our second VR experience, uh, starring Elizabeth Banks and um, uh, one of the biggest millennial stars, uh, Ingrid Nielsen, uh, last year at Sundance. Um, even had the first uh, red carpet VR premiere in Sundance history. Um, and watching um, the younger generation, um, it was our first piece where we actually used uh, the controllers that had just come out in that past year. And watching them um, go in with no preconceived notions on what using uh, controllers could be to be a character in the experience, um, you know, um, it, was, it was just fascinating because they picked it up faster than anyone. Um, you know, and, and learn the language of being a character and having hand controllers, um, you know, uh, as a robot so you could play fetch uh, with an alien dog or, um, you know, you could um, mirror their actions or they might mirror yours and, and creating these bonds and these experiences. Um, you know, so uh, that sort of fresh perspective is really exciting. Talk about the role of those, these experiences and how they connect people because one of the big trends also online today in today's I would say, yeah, the peg, the evolution is, you're really getting into the immersive experience, I believe that, but content creates bonds between people, and good experiences creates glue between relationships, and forges new ones, maybe enhances uh, existing ones. This is a big part of the media. Absolute, absolutely, um, uh, for us, emotional connection is the key to getting people to put on headsets uh, and to come back to our experiences, and that emotional connection for us um, w is what we've witnessed in terms of people forming bonds with our characters. So everyone knows that VR can bring you to brand new worlds and exciting places and immerse you in, in places that you can never go. But the one thing that I think we learned um, um, in, our experience, uh, in our experience with VR is that if you can create a bond between the user and other characters in the experience that they believe is real, um, and we use uh, psychology, technology, and storytelling to do that, um, then they want to come back again and again. So, um, you know, one of the trickiest parts of VR is trying to get people to have repeat views. Um, you know, and the feedback we've gotten from a lot of uh, the technology platforms is people come back time and time again, um, you know, and, and it seems to be because they actually believe these characters are real and that they're friends. So talk about your journey because um you're at the front end of this wave, and you're participating. You're creating art. You're creating work product. You're building technology with the, the Baobab Studios. What would you do if you were 16? I mean, if you were a you know, sophomore in high school, yeah. knowing what you know, if you can go back in time, or you could be today, what you know, at 16, what would you do? <laughs> um, when, when I was 16, I had no idea what I was going to do. When I graduated from college, I had no idea what I was going to do. Um, but what I will say is VR is really unique because it's so inter interdisciplinary. So it actually invites people from all different fabrics of society and different types of education. Um, the most, uh, so, uh, you know, I would, I would encourage 16 year olds to just be who they are and to play. Uh, and um, if, I, if I talk to my 16 year old self, um, I would have just encouraged myself to follow my interests and pursuits more because, um, uh, you know, um, many years later, um, it, it actually, VR um, has brought, um, brought me back to a lot of my roots and different things that I studied growing up and was fascinated by. Um, so it ignited your passion? Absolutely. things that you were really into that you might have forgotten? Is that yeah, I mean, I, I, I studied something called symbolic systems at Stanford University, and I had no idea what I was doing. It combined computer science, psychology, linguistics, um, and philosophy. Um, and, um, you know, the first thing I did after college was pursue potentially a, a career as a lawyer. Um, but now it all makes sense. <laughs> VR, VR makes, brings everything together. What could have been, you know? <laughs> 
Absolutely. Well, I mean, I love neural networks, symbolic systems. This is the underpinnings yeah. of this complex fabric that is powering this content market, right? So I'd love to get your thoughts. Is there a success formula that you're seeing emerging? I know there's no silver bullet yet. Yeah. A lot of experimentation, a lot of new things happening, but as this technology and the scaffolding around it is being built, while also original content is being built, it's still evolving. What's the success formula, and what's the things, the pitfalls, what to stay away from? I, I, I think it's about, um, it's really about sto good storytelling, and I think um, it's, it's uh, a time to be courageous and brave and, and put forward stories that wouldn't have um, otherwise been told in the more traditional mediums. Um, our latest project in production that I'm so personally excited about is, is called Legend of Crow. Uh, it stars John Legend as um, a, a beautiful bird with the most beautiful feathers and uh, the most gorgeous voice, um, who uh, during uh, dark and cold times uh, must go on a hero's journey to bring light back to the world. Um, something I, f I feel like in, in this day and age a lot of people can relate to. Um, but on top of this story being based upon a beautiful Native American legend that hasn't really been exposed to the world, um, we've taken the opportunity to take the themes of diversity and self-sacrifice um, and self-acceptance um, to um, create an all-star cast of minorities um, and women. And um, that's something I feel the younger generations can really relate to because uh, having um, worked a lot in Hollywood as a producer in traditional TV and film, um, things take a while and there's a certain way of casting and, and doing things that um, follow an older model. Yeah. And I think younger audiences are excited to, to have a character like Moth in our experience who speaks both Spanish and English because that's the way the world is today. So I gotta ask you a quick, you brought up um, diversity and, and inclusion and kind of in your comment. I gotta bring this up because you guys do hit a nice demographic I think is super relevant and important, the younger yeah. generation. So I talk to a lot of young people all the time. I say things like, you don't need to be a computer scientist to get into this game. You could be super smart. You don't need to learn how to code, hardcore coding to get into yeah. this. And, and they respond to that. And that's one, one kind of, I would say, narrative that conventional wisdom might not be right. And the other one is the um, diversity. So my son, 16 year old says, Dad, your generation is so politically correct. <laughs> like all this nonsense. So the younger generation does, is not living what we're living in in these dark times, I would say, certainly with diversity. But yeah. how does VR really equalize? And, and will the storm pass? I mean, diversity, inclusion, all that great yeah. stuff that are core issues certainly are being worked on. But we see, do we see hope here? Absolutely. I think uh, disruption in the form of a new technology and a new medium is... Um, while scary to some people is actually the most exciting and fertile time um, to equalize. Um, our CEO, Maureen Fan, who's a college classmate of mine, always wanted to work in animation. Um, you know, and uh, she finally saw the right opportunity when VR came and we put on headsets for the first time and saw how, the, how um, there could be a new wave of um, uh, exciting animators through this disruptive technology because Everyone else in more traditional animation is so focused on the old model and the old ways of doing things, of getting things off the ground, of financing, of um, uh, creating uh, certain kinds of content that um, have been proven over time in the old sort of studio model. Um, you know, and, and, uh, you what know, were some of those things that were instrumental in, in this yeah. breakout to, to forge this new ground? Um, I, I think a lot of it is the technology being ready, finally being ready. Um, our CTO, Larry Cutler, actually studied virtual reality at Stanford a decade before uh, Maureen and I were there. And, um, you know, he, he had always been waiting for the right time to go into VR. As he preached down, hey, kids, I used to walk in the snow <laughs> with bare feet to you guys. Or is he, what's his role? How's he doing? Uh, he's amazing. He was the head of global uh, character tech for all of DreamWorks Animation. And like I said, um, I think one thing that distinguishes us from... Uh, uh, some of the other people in VR is that we're so focused on characters, so focused on them making eye contact with you, with their uh, uh, facial features uh, reacting um, uh, in real time and being very believable and forging that bond between you and that character. So for us, that character technology and having uh, the top um, people in that space work with us um, is, is, is the long-term thing that is going to differentiate us. Uh, from the crowd. I'd like to get your reaction to my comment about the computer science, um, and that's mainly, mostly a Silicon Valley thing, uh, living in Palo Alto. So, 
you know, but people are struggling when they go to college. What should I major in? And there's a narrative right now. Oh, you got to learn how to code. You got to be a computer science major. You don't. You don't have to be yeah. a CS major. Some of the most creative and technical brilliance can also come from other disciplines. Yeah. What's your reaction to that? And what's your advice? I mean, I, I, I think people should just follow their effort. Um, because if you follow what naturally comes to you, what you're good at, and that also um, has uh, meaning and interest to you, um, and something that you can get feedback along the way, which is the great thing about being in a growing space, um, you are going to just spend your, you know, you're going to spend a lot of late nights doing that stuff, and you can always bring it into uh, your career path when that happens. Um, and I think, um, uh, you know, we're in a very DIY time um, in VR. No one knows anything. We're constantly making mistakes, um, but then learning from them. And that's like the most exciting um, uh, process of being where we are. So, uh, you know, to, to people who are of college age, I, I would just tell them, like, follow, follow your effort. Um, if you're interested in VR, um, it's the, an exciting time to just do it yourself. Um, learn from your mistakes. Um, and then, um, you know, um, and try to create something new. What does the new creative mean to you? When you hear that, new creative, yeah. what does that mean to you? You know, I, it's interesting being on, you know, being in, at these talks and panels and at all these festivals, because I feel like a lot of people are looking for, um, you know, that, that new innovator who comes out of nowhere and, and sort of just, you know, redefines the industry. And that, that could very well happen. But I actually think um, what's really exciting about right now is it's more about having, understanding the bridge between all the different mediums and disciplines. Um, I think new things are created when you combine um, areas that have not been traditionally aligned. Um, so for example, Orson Welles arguably created one of the, the you know, the first great cinematic masterpieces uh, in Citizen Kane. Um, and he came, he, but, but he was able to do so by bringing uh, values from, um, um, from theater and from radio and, and areas where he um, sort of learned the art of storytelling, and he was able to combine them in new and interesting ways that people hadn't seen before. So um, for me, it's, it's, it's less about um, you know, looking for that sort of silver, silver bullet of a creative person yeah. who comes out of nowhere, but, but these younger generations who understand these different mediums, combining them and creating connections with them in an exciting way. Brooks Brown from Starbreeze Studio said in the panel, that's breakout star is going to be the kid in the basement that no one's ever heard of. Uh, very possibly, but that kid in the basement, um, you know, he needs to be passionate about a lot of different disciplines. Um, so what we've tried to emulate in, in, in doing so is bringing the best people in gaming, bringing the best people uh, from traditional film, bringing people who had interests in um, a, a lot of different areas, uh, different art forms, and letting them kind of play together and learn from each other, <laughs> argue with each other, you know, and, 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 then, um, and then come up with something that no one's seen before. We're going to have to come over with cameras because that could be like an experiment, like it's just a reality show in and of itself, all that, all that talent, multidiscipline together. Abs a absolutely. It's it, like it, dynamite, ready to explode. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the challenge, it's the blessing, it's the curse and the blessing of, of, uh, of our medium right now because um, there's so much more to discover, but if people come in and have an open mind and are willing, you know, if, if the people from Hollywood are willing to learn from the people yeah. who do gaming in Silicon Valley, who are open to learning from the people in New York who grew up on live theater, um, you know, I, I, I feel those, uh, finding that intersection, yeah. finding those beautiful intersections are, are where we're going to thrive. Well, you guys highlight that multidisciplinary thing, but also highlights why diversity is so important. Diversity brings the most perspectives to the table, the most data most contribution. It might be a little bit longer <laughs> to, to work through the arguments, right? I mean, you got to be patient. Uh, you know, uh, absolutely, you have to be patient. Um, you know, we're, we're really lucky to be working with John Legend on our VR piece. He had actually been looking for several years to find, um, wanting to be in, play in the space, but not wanting to do it at, you know, with the wrong partner at the wrong time. Um, so it's, you know, there's, there's an art to timing in everything that we do right now. And when we presented to him the story we're doing with The Legend of Crow, you know, um, you know it, it felt like the perfect sort of match. Legend of Crow coming out ahead of content. Kane Lee here, Baobab Studios. Uh, thanks for spending the time here in the CUBE conversation. What's the timing of the release of, 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 the, of the program? Um, probably late spring, but um, uh, we're, we're going to be announcing um, some news around that soon, and we have some more exciting 
updates about it that um, I can't wait to share. All right, we are here at the Intel Tech Lounge. This is theCUBE's Conversation Sundance Film Festival, part of our coverage of Sundance 2018. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Thanks.